In this video, we'll be picking up where we left off. To the component list one, we've added methane and propane. So we now have a total of five components present. These five components properties will be predicted by the fluid packet specified in basis one, which is associated with component list one. In the simulation environment, we'll again create a stream and that stream we shall call feed we will specify a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius for the feed and a pressure of 5 atmospheres gauge We will specify a molar flow of 10 kilograms per second. In order to completely specify our stream, we must provide two out of the three state variables, temperature, pressure, and vapor fraction. You cannot specify all three or you would have over-specified the problem. This would occur when we complete the composition as having 0 0.2 mole percent of the pseudo component, 0 0.3 mole percent of the water, 0 0.01 carbon dioxide 0.4 methane and note the total of the mole fraction should always equal 1 for a completely defined fluid so in this case we would need 0 0.09 methane to make it exactly 1 ISIS does allow you to normalize when the exact mole fractions are not equal to 1. As you can see, we have come up with an over-specification problem. That is because, based on the fact that ISIS knows the temperature and pressure, it can predict what the vapor fraction is. And it predicts that the actual vapor fraction is 0.7895. I had specified a vapor fraction of 0.6. In order to solve this problem, we need to remove the over-specified information, in this case, the vapor fraction, and reactivate the solver. Once the solver is active, the calculations will continue and a flash calculation on the stream will be carried out. That flash calculation will give you information such as the phase fraction and the properties, as we saw earlier. In this video, we will be separating this mixed phase feed into its liquid and vapor components we will utilize a separator. To use the separator, click it once, then click on the flow sheet. We will now connect the feed to the separator and we will add a vapor stream and a liquid stream to the top and bottom of the separator. We specify feed as one of these feeds and there may be multiple inlets. As the vapor outlet, we shall call it vape and liquid for liquid outlet. By specifying the names in the relevant fields, a vapor object was created and a liquid object was created, both of which are material streams. Note that the vapor flow is 128.8 moles of flow and the liquid 34.34. If you look at the individual stream forms, 
you will see that the vapor phase fraction in the vapor phase is 1 and that its composition is mainly made up of the lighter components. Note there is none of the heavy pseudo component present. Similarly, in the liquid, you will see that the liquid is mostly the heavy pseudo component with some dissolved components there. However, those components we know to be dissolved because the vapor fraction of that stream is zero. We can look at this under the worksheet tab for the unit operation. Here we can see the composition of the individual units. All HISIS unit ops have a design form with a connection sheet. This is where you specify any connections to the HISIS object. You can also specify parameters. In this case, what type of separator it is. Or, is there a pressure drop at the inlet? In this case, we shall say there is a 0 0.5 atmosphere pressure drop at the outlet. Notice the inlet pressure is 5 atmospheres gauge and the outlet 4.5 atmospheres gauge. And the flow would have very slightly changed. Perhaps we would want to create a little more vapor. And to create that little more vapor, we can possibly take some of the heavy, the light key components that are in the liquid stream and vaporize them further. To do this we need to add energy to the stream. But we cannot change the temperature because it is exactly what it was at the inlet. To do this we must add another variable to the system. That variable being a heat stream. To connect the heat stream to the object we go to the connections tab and we specify the heat. Now we are short a degree of freedom but this gives us the ability to set the outlet temperature to whatever we would like it to be. In this case we can set that outlet temperature to 300 degrees Celsius. Now we can see that a small amount of the propane present has gone into the vapor stream. If we continue to raise this temperature, the duty required to raise the temperature will be calculated to be higher. In this case it is 2819 kilowatts at 300 degrees. If we to raise that to 500 degrees, the energy required to do that would be 9,000 kilowatts. And we should be seeing a very small amount of our pseudo component in the tops. Remember the pseudo component's boiling point was 550 degrees Celsius. So now that you have set up your flash drum and calculated the vapor fractions and the splits, you're ready to move on to the next level. In the next level, we'll be setting up a heater unit and a cooler unit to change the temperature of the stream as would be done in a heat exchanger.